Hello again, rail fans. You know, for 20 years, more like 25, actually, CSX has symboled most of its freight trains with the letter Q. The Q stood for quality. The slogan back then was quality in motion. That was uh, CSX's slogan. Well, now they're changing the letter symbol of a lot of those uh, freight train classes. The mixed freight Q trains are now going to be M, M for manifest. The intermodal trains are going to be I, I for intermodal. Locals were prefixed by division. Central and South Florida trains were O, Georgia, Alabama, and some North Florida trains were A, Chicago and Louisville locals were J, and so on like that. Now the locals will mostly be L trains, L for locals. That should be pretty easy. Loaded coal trains will be C, C for coal, and T, and empty coal trains will still carry an E. Unit bulk trains will be a B. That makes sense. Unit grain trains, however, will still carry a G. So let's take a Saturday morning and go out there and see if we come see if we can't find some of these new symboled freight trains. After getting a good list of what trains might be running through the area on a Saturday in June 2022, I drove out to find some of them. My first checkpoint is usually Winston Y in Lakeland. The southward number two track signal for the south leg of the Y was lit up with a good news indication. The yellow on top signals approach. Reduce your train to medium speed and prepare to stop at the next signal ahead. This setup at Winston Y usually means a pull by and back in to the yard. The signal was for 0713, five day a week shuttle from Winston to Taft and Orlando and back. The O prefix is a holdover from when this division was called the Florida Business Unit. O trains were, and some still are, locals in Tampa, Lakeland, and the Bone Valley. Seven thirteen is all rock hoppers today. Some loads, some empties. This is the usual type of concepts. When the end of train marker came up, I remembered a question I'd gotten about them. What powers this lonely telemetry device on the end of the train? When they were introduced, EOTs or FREDs for flashing rear end device were powered by disposable battery, like those big 6 volt or 12 volt lantern batteries. Now they have a recharging system with a generator driven by compressed air in the train brake line. This also powers the flashing red light. The light is why EOTs are still called markers. I drove down to the yard signal that was showing a restricting indication, the white light. I was going to get one more shot of 0713, but just then I heard the defect detector at the AR 849 mile post. Stokes on the Vitus subdivision. Speed four zero no defects. Repeat no defects. Total axles five three six. So I broke off from Winston and moved up to Lakeland Junction. At 0635, around the bend came X45311. X for extra train. Extras normally bring straggler traffic that hadn't arrived in the yard when the main train was made up in Waycross. There can also be other specially ordered moves. X45311 was all loaded hoppers, mineral aggregates for Conrad Yelvington, Martin Marietta, and maybe some others. Now the train is X453. The 11 on the end indicates the day of the month that the train originates. That serves to delineate the individual train on that particular day of the month. That way traffic managers, car managers, and train directors can keep track of individual specific movements. These caught my eye. New Trinity RDL A hoppers. These are steel, 2,402 cubic foot longitudinal discharge, two pocket open hoppers. Built for limestone or aggregate minerals, longitudinal means the doors open parallel to the rail so they can be larger, hence the rapid discharge capability. Normal hoppers open perpendicular to the rail and are shorter. 
Three aluminum hoppers at the end appear to be repurposed coal hoppers, cut up and shortened for heavy mineral use. I hung around here for about an hour and a half until the radio spoke up again from out on the main line. The old Q452, now M452, was coming up from Miami, passing the signal near Winter Haven. However, when he got into Lakeland, I realized too late this 452 was headed into Winston and would not take the right turn to Lakeland Junction. So this is all I got of 452. The old mixed freight Q trains are now mostly M trains, M for manifest. Adjacent to the main lines here at Lakeland Junction is the site of Old Lakeland Yard. For decades, it was the Atlantic Coastline's big yard in central Florida. Now, after lying dormant for more than 30 years, the city of Lakeland has transformed it into Bonnet Springs Park, conceived by local realtor David Bunch and funded primarily by the late public supermarkets heiress Carol Jenkins Barnett. The 168-acre park will feature the Florida Children's Museum, the Hollis Family Welcome Center, a wedding and event center, a huge playground, and lots of natural Florida acreage. The only addition I would suggest to Bonnet Springs is a rail fan viewing platform right there on the Vita subdivision. M455 approach medium, Lakeland Junction. 0748 now, and down came M455, formerly known as Q455. Note how when the engine gets close to me, the engineer starts ringing the bell. Rules require the locomotive bell be rung before moving an engine that's been sitting for a minute or more when moving through passenger stations, through public grade crossings, through tunnels, approaching roadway workers, or any persons near the track structure, like I am right now. Locomotives have had bells on them since nearly the beginning of railroading, though on new engines, they're just loudspeakers that play a bell sound effect file. This is daily Waycross to Orlando Manifest Freight. Orlando's big train with traffic for customers all along the A-Line and at Taft Yard. Plus, business for the Florida Central Railroad that breaks out of the A-Line in downtown Orlando and serves industries up through Toronto, Apopka, Winter Garden, Zellwood, and Mount Dora. I did a pretty good video a few years back on the Florida Central. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. After M455, I broke off at Lakeland and moved out toward the S-Line. Stopping at Zephyr Hills, home of the famous Zephyr Hills bottled water, I remembered a customer right on the S-Line I'd been wanting to check out. Cal Main Foods runs several egg farms around the area and operates a feed silo right next to the Zephyr Hills airport. They get several covered hopper grain cars a week. Cal Main's track breaks right out of the main line. An electric lock on a manual switch protects the main line. When the electric lock is opened, it will knock the signals on both ends of the block down to red. Cal Main is one of the few customers left on this ARF segment of the S-Line route. CSX is doing regular retimbering through here. Looks as though they're replacing the ties onto this switch as well. I moved on north eight miles into Dade City. By now it was getting close to lunchtime and breakfast was only coffee and an English muffin around 5.30. So I swung into Bubba Q's Barbecue. Bubba Q's is a chain restaurant, but the chain isn't very big. The first store is in Chiefland, Florida. 
Now, I like barbecues for three reasons. The founders are Florida people. Their first restaurant is in an Atlantic coastline town, Chiefland, and their pulled pork is excellent. That's what I ordered. I got it to go like always and drove up near the tracks to eat. The Dade City Coastline Depot, which houses the Dade City Historical and Cultural Museum. While a trio of Sand Hill Cranes scoured the CSX Main for their lunch, I had mine in the truck. French fries, Texas toast, and pulled pork. Barbecues has several sauces. I like the one they call tractor grease. I also love it when the pork has the burned sections. Barbecues is always delicious. They got 11 locations in Florida and two in Louisiana. But lunch would be over right quick like. 729, clear, signal Ellerslie, 1 to Main, 61, North L729 was two signals away and coming up fast. So, given the drizzling rain, I set up on the back porch of the depot. Here, you get a higher vantage point that's also pretty dry. And here he was, L729, a new train on the S-Line roster. The AC44CW, number 124 in the lead, had what I believed to be a clinch field decal on the nose. CSX started this practice in 2015, applying predecessor road decals to its engines as an homage to all the old lines that created CSX. L729 is daily empty rock between Winston, Florida and Brown Sand, Georgia. It comes south loaded as L743. He also works Wildwood and Baldwin Yards along his way. The word is that all CSX locals are going to be L trains soon. If that's true, L729 and L743 will likely become B729 and B743. 1334 and up next was M452 formerly known as the train called Q452. Note when the engineer blows the horn how the bell starts ringing. I believe this is automatic on most locomotives. This is the one we missed early this morning at Lakeland Junction. After stopping early this morning to work Winston Yard, he's on his way to Waycross, but he doesn't have much train left. One engine and 23 hoppers in tow, 15 open rock loads, and eight jumbo covered hopper loads. The covered hoppers were likely Bone Valley phosphate picked up at Winston. Here at Dade City, the drone gives us a view over the scrub brush you can't really see from the depot, a retention pond and another lake fed by a wastewater treatment plant nearby. At 15.05, we got back to business with our second 453 of the day. This was M453, formerly Q453. Now remember, X453 was the first train we saw at Lakeland Junction this morning. I'm not sure why the extra section would be eight hours ahead of the regular section. M453-11 had one engine in the lead, 39 cars trailing, then one DP engine, and 30 cars trailing that. A tiny train compared to its usual length. It's my theory that CSX is doing some catch-up work to alleviate some service complaints they've had from customers lately. Afterward, I moved north a few miles to a spot north of the Dade City siding. As I drove, I could hear E040 coming up from the south. A thunderstorm sideswiped me and moved off just as quickly as I got to Gould Road. I no sooner got set up than here came E040, northbound empty coal out of Orlando's Stanton power plant.
Until the recent symbol change, this train used to come south loaded as NO40. Now the loaded train is symboled CO40, C for coal. This is a nice spot because it's fairly open, has a signal and a defect detector. The signal is a double-sided ABS light that serves as either the distant to Dade City or the distant to Lacoochee, depending on which way the train is heading. CSX detector, milepost 825.9, no defects, repeat, no defects, total axles 360. Now railroads, just like all industries, are constantly optimizing their business, looking for new methods, techniques, and uh, practices to make their business run smoother, faster, and and cheaper. CSX is doing this with resembling uh, a lot of their freight trains. Uh, that Florida Central uh, video that I mentioned, there uh, is the link for that. Hit that uh, to take a look at that. Not a bad video if I do say so. Now please hit that like button if you like this video. Share it with your friends also. I'd appreciate that. That, that really helps me out a lot. Write your comments in the comment section down below. I read them all. And don't forget, until next time, let's plan to meet up somewhere out there on the high iron. Till then, this is Danny Harmon, out.